So we put together a multi-stakeholder research team at Optum Labs, consisting of clinicians, epidemiologists, and statisticians, all of whom were interested in investigating long-term outcomes in individuals infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Evidence has shown that individuals report symptoms and clinical complications months after the acute phase of the illness is over. Um, however, many of these studies have been conducted among hospitalized patients. Far fewer have been evaluating sequelae in younger and healthier individuals. So we saw this as an opportunity to better understand the magnitude of risk and the impact of the virus on a more generalizable population where the large majority of individuals recovered at home. So in this particular study, we identified individuals 18 to 65 years of age who were continuously enrolled in a large US health plan uh, since January, 2019. And we followed them for first time clinical complications that required medical attention three weeks after the initial diagnosis of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And because our sample size was so large, we were not only able to evaluate overall risk, but we were also able to evaluate how risk differed by age, gender, pre-existing conditions, and hospitalization status. We identified individuals from three different data sources from a large U.S. health plan including an administrative claims database, an outpatient lab testing database, and an inpatient hospital admission database. So we created the SARS-CoV-2 infection group by including all the individuals who had a SARS-CoV-2 infection evidence during January 2020 to October 2020. And then we compared them to three different groups, including the first one, a group of individuals who didn't have SARS-CoV-2 infection in 2020, Second, a historical group of individuals who, uh, who didn't have SARS-CoV-2 definitely back in 2019, and another historical group of individuals who had viral, uh, who had viral lower respiratory illness such as a flu or pneumonia, and we matched the SARS-CoV uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection group to each of these three groups by uh, on a variety of factors including age, gender, underlying condition health or uh, utilization of health service in the past. So we evaluated the newly diagnosis of clinical outcome by using ICD-10 codes for over 50 different clinical outcomes over across different uh, organ systems, including respiratory, cardiovascular, neurological, renal, and metabolic, after three weeks after their initial infection of SARS-CoV-2. So since we are focused on the newly onset of a clinical condition, when assessing each particular clinical outcome, we excluded the individual who were diagnosed with this same condition prior to their SARS-CoV-2 infection or were diagnosed of this condition during, during their acute phase of, of the illness. We identified over 9 million individuals who met our eligibility criteria and we identified over 266,000 individuals who had been infected with SARS-CoV-2 between January and October of 2020. We found that 14% of individuals with COVID-19 were diagnosed with at least one new sequelae that required medical attention beginning three weeks after the initial infection, compared to 9% of individuals without COVID-19 during the same time period. This suggests that about 5% of the sequelae are likely due to COVID-19. We also saw a specific set of clinical complications that were more likely to be diagnosed among individuals infected with SARS-CoV-2 than any of the comparison groups we evaluated. These complications included chronic respiratory failure, myocarditis, cardiac arrhythmias, including orthostatic tachycardia, hypercoagulability, encephalopathy, peripheral neuropathy, amnesia or memory difficulties, diabetes, liver test abnormalities, anxiety, and fatigue. In addition, we found that while individuals who were older had pre-existing conditions and were admitted to the hospital because of COVID-19 were at greatest excess risk. However, younger adults, those under age 50, those with no pre-existing conditions, or those not admitted to the hospital for COVID-19 also had an increased risk of developing new clinical sequelae. 
With over 165 million worldwide cases of COVID-19, even a 5% incidence of post-COVID sequelae equates to over 8 million affected individuals. We therefore need to understand the natural history of long COVID in order to be prepared to help this large cohort of patients. We believe that the next steps include identifying the most vulnerable populations at risk for future complications and identifying ways to optimize the diagnostic approaches and evaluate the most effective treatments or rehabilitative strategies so that these individuals can live their lives to their fullest.